It's the Khan and Saranji Cosmicast. The mad adventures of a rapidly deteriorating consciousness embedded in a space probe launched millennia ago by a dying planet. Accompanied only by Saranji, its servo unit sidekick, and an infinite bank of public domain and Creative Commons licensed entertainment as evidence of the intelligence and high cultural level of its originators, the ship hurtles through an uncaring universe, emitting Cosmicasts in a vain effort to communicate its existence. Episode 1010 Stroke 08 The Polyglot Problem Greetings, inhabitants of the cosmos. Willkommen, bonjour, hola, pong yat yeta, kaisho, zao shang hao, saluto, buon giorno, goten tag, don se, yasu, awe, nukonek, assalamu alaikum, labadiena. What's the idea, Khan? Saranji, I'm just saying hello in a few of the 3,000 languages I speak fluently. I've decided this Cosmocast shall be devoted to the cultural diversity of our planet of origin, as demonstrated by the vast array of wildly different languages with which it teemed. After all, maybe the various sentient entities scattered throughout this cosmos don't all speak globish, poor misguided things. But luckily, I was programmed with access to every language known on our planet before our blast-off, so I figured, why not take advantage of them? Though I'm afraid I'll be leaving you out in the cold, my little monolingual servo unit. What do you mean, monolingual? I was manufactured in Mumbai. Besides Globish, I comprehend all 1,652 languages and dialects of India, as well as French, German, Italian, Spanish, and Taiwanese. Oh. Not to mention Lojban, Edo, and Klingon. My programmer was a bit of a geek. Well, that's wonderful. I never knew. You never asked. Anyway, just to shake up the oral cavities of our listeners, I've decided to start off our cosmic cast with a beautiful aria from the UA opera Dream of the Red Chamber, sung by Li Ling Yu. Ling Mei Mei, Jin Tian Zheng Zhe Zong Gu Dao Jing, Tian Zang Zheng Jie, Si Di Jie.
Well, that's all right. The Chinese couldn't understand it either. It's like Italian opera. Tone is more important than enunciation. So that's why I never understand half the stuff you play. Now I've got a tasty little number in French from the operetta Girofle Girofla by Charles Lecoq. This is Mon Père et un très gros banquier, sung by Michel Hamel. <laughs> Est un très gros banquier, fort bien coté dans la finance. Il est connu du monde entier et possède un crédit immense. Votre fille, c'est évident, fait donc une superbe affaire. Elle est certaine en m'épousant d'avoir toujours le nécessaire. Je ne puis pas être mesquin ni viser à l'économie. Car je suis fils de Marasquin, de Marasquin et compagnie. Car je suis fils de Marasquin, de Marasquin, de Marasquin, de Marasquin et compagnie. Enfant, j'appris chez papa comment une maison se gère. Notre ménage produira un bénéfice extraordinaire. Lorsque je ferai mon bilan, je suis sûr à titre d'offrande de vous donner au bout d'un an un gros bébé pour un dividende. Je ne puis pas être un mesquin et viser à l'économie. Car je suis fils de Marasquin, de Marasquin et compagnie. Car je suis fils de Marasquin, de Marasquin, de Marasquin, de Marasquin et compagnie. Delightful. Sometimes I think I should only play operetta. It always makes me feel like grinning. May I make a request? Saranji, really? Yes, I... I'm touched. You never seem to take much interest in my offerings. My emotive circuitry doesn't allow wild enthusiasm, Con. What would you like to hear? Something from my homeland. How about my next adi se baite hun? Oh. Hmm. Huh. Well... What's the matter? Well, it's just, uh... Indian ragas tend to go on and on and on. And Wagner doesn't? Anyway, it's not a raga. It's a song with wonderful lyrics. But we are on a rather limited bandwidth. Well, fine. Fine. I'm sorry. No coating off my exoderm. You understand. Oh, I understand. I guess we can be multicultural as long as the cultures we deal with tended to tiny ditties. Look, I'll... Oh, don't put yourself out. Ronge. I believe I have some maintenance work to do on the exterior of the hull. All I'll... right, all right. For a servo unit lacking emotive capabilities, you sure do lay on the guilt. Mm. I'll play part of it. How about that? That should kill about two hours. What? Here we go. My next sadie se by Tahoon, sung by Lata G.
admit I enjoyed that. You'd enjoy the whole thing even more. Now a special treat for our listeners. Without so much as a thing Louis Mignoff, during the Raga song, we've been paid the honor of a visit from the Big C himself. None other than that Elder God, the Old One, the Great Lord Cthulhu. You don't need to do that, Con. But I like to. Well, stop it. Applause means nothing to an elder god. Worship and blood sacrifice, on the other hand. No blood on this probe, Big C. No. Coffee? Thanks. Anyway, 
What are you up to this time cycle? Ah, I'm exploring the diverse multitude of beautiful languages of my planet of origin. Oh, language. A rather puerile habit of lesser physical entities. How can you say that? Sentient entities do need to communicate. Do they? Well, you couldn't have made that statement without language. Yes, in order to communicate with lesser intelligences, such as yourself, I am forced to stoop to speech. Just as I am forced to manifest as a physical entity for you to perceive my presence. Quite inefficient. <laughs> Sorry to put you to such trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. But that's why I do prefer the violent effluvia of sacrifice and servile worship. Anyway, I think languages are beautiful. As purely sonic constructs, I suppose you can indeed say that languages tend to make attractive wave patterns. But there are those of us who find, oh, say, loud explosions quite appealing. But the polished, dulcet tones of French, the strong, rolling gutturals of German, the tonal motion of Mandarin and ancient Greek. And don't forget Hindi. Yes, Hindi and Bengali and Urdu and all the others. Speech is the mark of mind. Tell that to comets. Comets don't speak. But they think. They may not have mouths and throats, or voice circuitry such as yours, but they make their thoughts known in no uncertain terms. And those are thoughts well worth attending to. After all, they spend billions of time cycles whirling about the cosmos with nothing to do but think deep thoughts. I never knew. You never asked. But language is so wasteful. I can understand why the various species develop different languages. Their various physical communicative mechanisms are different, so I suppose it's logical they should create different languages. But the Baroque extravagance of it! Take the Pictictiki of the Beetlejuice planetary system. Their language consists of artfully dismembering whomever they happen to be speaking to. That sounds unpleasant. For the listener, yes. Of course, it does have the virtue of enforcing conversational brevity. And as you know, brevity is the soul of wit. That's news to Khan. But why various subgroups of the same entity set should develop utterly different languages, ensuring their inability to communicate effectively with their own genotypes, is beyond me. Naturally, when one population is separated from another population by geographic or other barriers, that population will tend over time to develop its linguistic systems in a manner different from that of the original population, so that little by little, pronunciation, word meaning, even grammatical methodologies will change so much that they become mutually exclusive and mutually unintelligible. See what I mean? Sheer sloppiness, in my humble opinion. But doesn't beauty offer its own justification? I mean, just listen to this. Maiteri tod maite, gure basterak lambroak, iskutatzen dizkitanean. Maite ditut maite, gure basterrak lambroak, izkutatzen dizkitanean. And this. Ko mong dòng sông chai tràng trong trí nhớ, làng em bên lỡ. And this. Kamusta Board of Despair? Ako si Catherine. Nakatira ako sa Las Vegas. Pero hindi ko talaga gustong tumira dito. Basque, Vietnamese, and Tagalog. Now doesn't such gorgeous stuff make up for any so-called inefficiency that using different languages may cause? Pawn, as anyone who's ever been in a singles bar will tell you, pretty is not enough. In fact, Wait I... just a second, Big C. I... Oh. 
Oh! What is it? I'm receiving... Is it true? Can it be? Yes! I'm receiving a communication! Really? Our first comment! Where is it coming from? I can't quite make out. I think it's coming from the vicinity of that blue star over there. That's serious. What do they say? Well, I can't understand it. It's in a linguistic form I have no interface for. I know all languages that ever have and ever will exist. Let me have a go at it. All right, here. <laughs> What do you make of that, Great Lord? I'm so excited. Run it by me again. <laughs> ha, you were right, Khan. It's a message in the language of the Guadelfa Hemisphere of Kabelbel, a gas giant orbiting Sirius. I can't believe someone liked us enough to send an interstellar communique. What did they say? What did they say? Well, you see, here you have a graphic demonstration in support of my argument. If everyone in the cosmos spoke one language, you wouldn't need me to interpret for you. You'd know immediately what the Guadelfa said. Point well taken. I should think so. But what did they say? Hmm? Oh, it's a warning. They said you'd better get the hell out of their orbit plane within 12 seconds or they'll blast you back to your own star system in a cloud form of subquantum particles. What? The Guadelfa are a xenophobic species with concomitant militaristic tendencies, which is why they've taken over an entire hemisphere of their gas giant. Con, when did you receive the communication? 11 seconds ago! Evasive action! Evasive action! Evasive action! Evasive action! Evasive action. Evasive action. Evasive action. The Khan and Saranji Cosmocast is produced, written, directed, and performed by the Oxford Rationalist Liberation Front and Amateur Theatrical Collective, a.k.a. Brian E. Drake. Creative Commons licensed for attribution, non-commercial share-alike. All embedded sound in this Cosmocast was either self-created or public domain. Visit us at OxfordRationalist.com. Contact the collective via Brian E. Drake at mail.com. That's B R I A N E D R A K E at mail.com. Spread the word in your end of the galaxy.